And so that means he gets confirmed without having to give the definition and take all of the crap about having to explain what he would define a assault weapon as. So he gets to go through the confirmation process without having to do that and saying, well, that's up to Congress. And then when Congress passes the law and then people get mad at the congressman for the way that the ATF is enforcing that law, they say, oh, we, well, we didn't do that. That's up to the ATF. You see how they avoid accountability that way? They can just give you the government runaround forever. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. We're going to be focusing on, for this Daily Dose of Stupid, David Ch Chipman, who is the Biden nominee for the director of the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Administration. So the organization within the government that is supposed to take care of regulating alcohol, uh, alcohol tobacco, and firearms doesn't seem to know an awful lot about guns. Do you believe in banning assault weapons? I do, sir. Okay. Define assault weapons. Um, assault weapons would be something that um, members of Congress would define. Well, how do you define it? You're going to be running the agency. Um, I, Senator, I think this is a good question. If I am um, confirmed as ATF director... Um, I got 35 seconds left. Define it for me, would you please, sir? Um, What's an assault there, weapon? Yeah, Senator, uh, um, the bill uh, to ban assault what, weapons is what is your dozens definition of pages. Of an There's weapon. no way I could define an assault weapon. You don't have any. You're going to run an, this agency, and you don't have a definition of assault weapon. But I would be enforcing the definition that members yeah, of Congress be have. Hmm. You want to ban it, you just can't define it. That seems to be the standard that we're running with here. So you, you really think that we should be banning assault weapons, but you can't actually tell me what an assault weapon is. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is a common position amongst the left because they want to ban assault weapons, but then when you ask them what a, assault weapons actually are, they have no idea. This is actually pretty common with bump stocks. This is pretty common with ghost guns. Uh, you know, all of these catchy buzzwords that liberals talk about things they'd like to ban. When you ask them what the thing is, they can't actually tell you. They just know that they're supposed to ban it and it sounds scary. So we should get rid of it, but they can't actually tell you what it is or why they want to ban it. And what's funny about this is if the situation were reversed, they would never let people on the right get away with something like this. For example, when I would say, I think we should ban gay marriage. Can you define gay marriage? Uh, I, I don't know, but like it has the word gay in it. And I think gay is supposed to be bad. So I'm going to go with no, I, I don't. I think we should just ban gay marriage. Well, why are you against it if you can't define it? Like, don't you have to know what something is before you know what your position is on it? Now, this is the way that Americans used to think. Now we've kind of devolved into, well, I know that my team is against it. Therefore, I'm going to be against it because that's what my team is against. It's kind of like how Auburn fans like myself just know instinctively that we're supposed to hate Alabama. Like it's, That's kind of what it is. It, it really is. Um, well, I know I'm supposed to be against Alabama and I know I'm supposed to be against Georgia. Um, but unfortunately, that's about the level of seriousness that has come into this country that a lot of people don't even know their own policy positions. The same thing would be true with like partial birth abortion. If I said, I just want to ban partial birth abortion. Well, can you tell me what partial birth abortion is? I, well, it should be banned. I know that. Here's what's actually going on here, though. The truth is, I think you can actually define assault weapon. And here's what I mean by that. There's not really a good definition no matter who's giving it. And I say that of people on the right and the left. I, I don't know a ton about guns, but I know enough to know what generally people consider assault weapons. But the thing is, that's an incredibly vague moving target.
because some people will define this as assault weapon, but to the next person, that's not an assault weapon at all. It is a term that they manufactured. It says nothing to the functionality of the gun. It is a, uh, every time it's been defa defined in a law, almost always the features that define it are largely cosmetic. Things like barrel shrouds or powder suppressors or sound suppressors. Uh, things like that. So it, it's almost always centered around stuff like that. Things that have a, a, a telescopic um, butt or a, a scope. So if you have any of that, apparently that constitutes being an assault weapon, even though it doesn't actually change how the gun fires or how easy it is to fire or any of those things. It doesn't change how big a hole the bullet makes, none of those things. They just know that it's an assault weapon, therefore it must be bad because it sounds like a super, super scary gun. But I don't think that that's actually what's going on here. This is a guy that did serve in the ATF. He does know a little bit about guns, unlike most of the people that are against assault weapons and want them banned, like Joe Biden, who demonstrates over and over and over again, he has no idea what he's talking about when it comes to guns. Um, he, he tells people to just fire shotguns through a, a closed door or up in the air, both of which are illegal, by the way. Um, and talks about how it's incredibly hard to aim and hard to shoot an AR-15, but it's a lot easier to shoot and aim a shotgun, which is completely untrue. I've shot both on many occasions. So he's not like the, the ones that usually just don't know what they're talking about about guns. It's not that he can't define it. And this is why I'm cheating a little bit by putting this in the Daily Dose of Stupid. I mean, yes, the concept we're talking about is stupid. But I don't think he's actually dumb, and I don't think he's actually ignorant. I think what's actually going on here is he could define it if he wanted to. He's choosing not to because he knows it will look bad, and it will hurt his confirmation vote. And the reason that I say that is he has a tell in this segment, and we're actually going to look at another one here in a second that kind of illustrates this. He doesn't want to define it. Because he keeps deferring to Congress and saying that they're the ones that are actually going to define it. And he basically just sort of re-illustrates this and, and drives this point home when he's being questioned by Senator Cotton here. You have called for an assault weapons ban. I have a simple question for you. What is an assault weapon? Senator, um, an assault weapon would be, in, in the context of the question you asked, what Congress uh, defines it as. So you're asking us to ban assault weapons. We have to write legislation. Can you tell me what is an assault weapon? How would you define it if you were the chair, the head of the ATF? How have you defined it over the last several years uh, as your role as a gun control advocate? Um, Senator, um, if I'm confirmed as ATF director, um, you know, my recollection is the only um, um, process but by which ATF is weighed in is that I know there's a demand letter three program which requires multiple reports, uh, multiple sale reports on the southwestern border. And ATF in that program has defined an assault rifle as any semi-automatic rifle capable of accepting a detachable magazine um, above the caliber of 22, which would include a 223, which is, you know, largely the so AR-15 round. All right, so you see there that he actually does give a definition, but, and I didn't play it because it's long and boring. After that, he does try to clarify and sort of hedge himself. He's like, well, that's not really my personal definition. That's the definition, that's the only definition that I could think of where the ATF has designated something to be an assault rifle. And so he's very careful here in trying to say, this isn't my definition, it's a definition that I can give you that, that might be kind of similar to something that I would think of. And, and we'll parse through the fine details of that in a second. But what's important to understand here is this is how the game is played. This is how they get gun control through. See, what he's saying there is, well, I'm just the ATF director if I get confirmed. And so all I'm going to do is enforce the laws that Congress passes. But what happens when Congress actually passes that law? there's a good chance that it wouldn't define assault weapon at all, or it would leave certain levels of vagueness in the law to allow the ATF director to define it for them. This is something that Congress has been doing for decades now. 
they don't actually pass a law. They'll pass something like the Clean Air and Water Act, where they say uh, the EPA has to make air clean and water clean go. And they don't actually offer directions of what the EPA is supposed to do about that or how they're supposed to achieve that goal. They just say in the law, th that's going to be left up to the discretion of the bureaucrats in that administration, in that particular branch of the federal government. And this is no different. A lot of times when they try to pass gun control or anything related to guns, they'll pass something that's super vague and not real specific, something like the word assault weapon, and then say, well, that will be left up to the discretion of the person running the ATF. And see, this is how both sides avoid accountability. Because while he's not a bureaucrat right now, that's what he's trying out to be. And so he's just sitting there going like, well, I don't really have a personal definition of assault weapons. This is a definition that, you know, the ATF used at one point, and, and it might be kind of similar to something that I would do. But I, I don't really have a definition because I would just go with whatever Congress says. And then Congress actually passes the law and the law says, well, we'll just go with whatever the ATF says. And so that means he gets confirmed without having to give the definition and take all of the crap about having to explain what he would define a assault weapon as. So he gets to go through the confirmation process without having to do that and saying, well, that's up to Congress. And then when Congress passes the law and then people get mad at the congressman for the way that the ATF is enforcing that law, they say, oh, we, well, we didn't do that. That's up to the ATF. You see how they avoid accountability that way? They can just give you the government runaround forever. And see, once it's, oh, well, sorry, that's not us. That's the ATF that made that call. Okay, how do you get the ATF out of office? You can't. You can't recall the ATF. You can't impeach a sitting ATF director. Well, actually, you could uh, because it is an appointed one. But my point is that's not something that you could do as a voter, as a regular citizen. And so this is how the bureaucracy and Congress kind of protect each other while not having to take accountability for any of it. That's how the game is played. This is how this runs in Washington and how the politicians can say, well, we didn't do that. And then the ATF can say, yeah, well, we were just doing what Congress told us to do. And so you see how it just kind of creates that vicious feedback loop. But it's important to note that in that definition where he says it would be any rifle that is able to accept a detachable magazine of a caliber higher than 22, that would be the AR-15 and pretty much every other modern sporting rifle. Just about all of them. There would be a handful of exceptions because you could have one that's not a uh, automatic or sorry, a semi-automatic. You could have a lever action. You could have a bolt action, something like that. Something that requires two actions to be able to fire or a single round. Or you could use one that doesn't have a detachable magazine. But the way that it works now, just about all of them are detachable. The only exceptions are like muzzle loaders and some bolt action rifles. And I think that there actually are some lever actions that are magazine fed. I honestly don't know. Uh, but, but I think most of them are not magazine fed either. But um, the vast majority of rifles that are sold, the vast majority of the ones that people actually buy, do have the detachable magazine. I mean, to put it into car terms, for those of you that may not be all that gun savvy, uh, it would be like saying, well, we're just going to ban all of the cars that have air conditioner. Okay, is that banning all the cars? No, technically, there are probably a few cars on the road that don't have air conditioner now. But good luck finding one. They're out there, but it's not real common. And so that's kind of what we're dealing with here. They, he's talking about something that is, is kind of standard amongst things that people would buy now. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.